Welcome back everybody to our videos. This time we're looking at CodeSys once again, but we're looking at the off delay timer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how the off delay timer works. Then we're gonna show you how we can design that off delay timer with just the on delay timer. Let's get into today's video. So currently we have our program for our valve and pump. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get rid of this. And like I say, we're gonna just show you how the off delay timer works first of all. I'm gonna delete these variables as well, except for our start, stop and run signal. So there's our current variables. Let's insert a new network and let's put in a normally open contact and we'll assign this to our run signal. And what we'll do is we'll take that to our TOF. So we'll put our TOF timer in here. We'll leave it as TOF zero. So I'll just enter that and apply that as a variable. And we'll set this to T hash uh, 10 seconds. Again, the ET isn't required. And what we'll do is I'll put in an output coil after the TOF and we'll tie this to a lamp and just say, okay. So let's, Build our project to generate code. I'm going to make sure there's no errors or warnings. There's no errors or warnings there. Let's go to online and let's go into simulation. And then inside a the simulation, if we log in, yes to that, and then start our process from there. Right. So I'm going to double click our start PB and we're just going to see how this TOF operates. So control F7. And you'll notice the run flag is turned on. The run flag is turned on over here. The timer hasn't ran just yet, and the lamp has now turned on. Interesting. If I just double click my start PB and F7 that, I've now turned it off. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna double click my stop, and I'm gonna control F7 this. And you'll now see that the TOF is running, but my lamp is still on. So we're gonna let this run, eight, nine, 10, and then that turns off our lamp. The TOF is just like our TOF timer inside the Siemens TIA portal. What it will do is when we give it the enable signal, it'll turn the output on straight away. The timer will not run. What it will then do is it will wait then until the signal turns off. When the signal turns off, it then continues running that output for a period of time until it's elapsed and then it will turn off the output there. Think of this like an extraction farm at a timber mill. When we are running the process of our timber mill and we're running the timber mill, there's a lot of sawdust up in the air, so we have our extraction farm running at the same time. When the timber mill is finished running its process, the process will stop. We continue running that extraction farm for a period of time after that. That's to allow the dust to settle, literally let the dust settle. And then we turn off the extraction farm from there. So what if our PLC doesn't have the TOF? Because like I say, not every PLC has all these timers available inside of it. So how do we combat that without the TOF? Well, we need to think of some logic inside of this. So the way the TOF works is when we give it the signal, when we control the timer, it turns on straight away the output. So if I come offline here, so if I stop this, if I log out, and if I just jump into here and turn off the simulation and close down this bottom window, Let's get rid of this network. Let's take away our lamp, let's take away our TOF. So what I want to do is when we run, we turn on the extraction fan. After the process has stopped running, we then turn off the extraction fan 10 seconds later. So I'll insert a new network and straightforward when the run signal is on, take it to a coil. And what I want to do here is run an extraction fan and say okay to that. So there's my extraction fan over there. So when we are running, the extraction fan is running. Now what I want to look at is when the run signal turns off. Now in PLCs, we've got what we call rising triggers and falling triggers. And inside the code sys, they have the same stuff as well. They have rising triggers and falling triggers. If we open up our function blocks, you'll see there R trig and F trig. And what this does, it detects the rising edge of the input or the falling edge of the input. So in this case here, I'm interested in the falling edge of the input because that's when the run signal turns off. So if I go into here and I create a new network, I'm gonna tie my run signal. So normally open contact to my run signal like so. 
And I'm going to take this F trig and I'm going to drop this into place over here. And there's my F trig. I'm then going to just enter that, give it a variable name, and there's my F trig. And then I've got my output here. This output will turn on for one PLC scan when my run signal turns off. So let's tie that to a coil. So let's take our coil and drop that into here. And what we'll do is we'll call this um, run falling edge. So this is detecting the run falling edge. What we'll then do is we'll then create a new network underneath and we'll say when our run falling edge turns on, which is only going to be on for one PLC scan, I then want to turn on a coil. And this is going to tell us to continue running our extraction fans. So this is telling us that the process is off. So let's call this uh, process off. There we go. And just say OK to that. We're going to latch this on. So let's get an OR in contact. And let's call this process off. So when our run signal turns off, it turns on our run falling edge for one PLC scan. And that latches on our process off. Our run signal in the second network would have turned off by now, causing our extraction fan to turn off, which we don't want to have happen. So what I'll do here is I'll put a branching contact in underneath it, and I'll tie this to my process run off signal, like so. So when our run signal turns off, falling edge turns on, turns on our process off signal and latches it on. I then want to run a delay for 10 seconds. So if I branch down from here, I put a timer in, just a standard timer on delay, and we'll just call it a TON0. I'll take that to a T hash 10S, and I don't need that ET. When this timer's finished, what we then want to do is we then want to turn off this process off signal. So if I come into here and I normally close contact my TON dot Q, that will pulse this for 10 seconds and then reset my process off, turning off this whole process from here. And that now reacts just like our off delay timer. So just to go over this once more, because it can be confusing with the names that I've gave it. When our process is running, our extraction fan turns on. When the process turns off, it'll detect this via the falling edge and it will trigger our run falling edge for one PLC scan. What we'll then do is we then latch on our process off signal and that continues running our extraction fan. In the meantime, our on delay timer is now running for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, it then resets our process off signal, turning that off and then everything resets from there. So let's save our work, build and generate code here. No errors, no warnings. Let's go into online and let's click on simulation. Let's then log in and download this program. There we go. And let's start the PLC. So if I double click my start PB and I just go control F7, double click it and control F7 once again, our run signal is latched on, our extraction fan is on. None of this is running just yet because our run signal hasn't turned off. If I was to double click my stop PB and control F7, this will blip for one PLC scan, latch on this signal here, which will continue holding this on, run this timer for 10 seconds, and then turn it back off again. So are we ready? Three, two, one, control F7. There we go. Process off is now holding this on. This timer is now running for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, contact will open, and then everything goes back to zero once again. Double click this, control F7, and we're back to our base project. So if you don't have that timer off delay, that's how we can create it. We need that F trig first of all, just to detect that falling edge. And then we can use, use a stand on delay timer to create that. Every timer that PLCs give you, your timer pulse, your off delay timers, you can create all of these with just the on delay timer. So if you don't have it, create it. Don't worry about not having that timer there available to you. Again, 
Thanks for watching this video. If you're interested in learning PLC training with ourselves, we've got our online training on our website, www.scanthing.co.uk. And we've also got our hands-on training available, our IMFFP training courses, Industrial Maintenance of Fault Finding Pro, which is recognized by EEL and assured by City and Guilds. Get in touch with us below and we'll be sure to help you out. I'll see you on the next one, guys.